Yes, clap your hands. Let us all stand and respond to the call to worship. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God and with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Together, sing, sing praises, praises to God. God. Sing, sing praises. praises. Sing, sing praises, praises to our king. king. Sing, sing praises. praises. Let us sing and proclaim to God how great thou art.
us affirm our faith in God. Together, we are not alone. alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created, created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gloria Patri. pray. Lord, to whom shall we go? Together, you have the words we, of eternal life. Help, help us now, now to hear and obey, obey what, what you say, you say to, to us today. today to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I will hand this time to Pastor Ben to preach the word. Thank you, TV, for leading us in a time of worship. Indeed, we are gathered here to hear God's Word and our hearts are open for His words of life and truth to be deposited in our hearts so that it may bear fruit. Well, we are starting on a new sermon series this week and it will take us through all the way till the end of November. And then in December, there will be a new sermon series uh, and uh, that will be a month of evangelistic sermons that will be preached in the month of December. And so then that is when we can bring our friends to hear the good news of God's love for them. But now in this month, this next two months, we are going to be hearing a series of sermons about how the Bible reminds us that we do have good news. In the past three years, right, we have been going out to... Uh, love, to bless, to make a difference in our one more, in our spheres of influence. We've gone out to love, to bless, to make a difference in our neighbours in blocks 152, 153, 154. And this year, we've been going out to the nations to bless, to love, and to make a difference in. And we do so because, as a people of God, we do have good news for ourselves and for the world. It's Good news because this is what Christ proclaims for all of us in our lives and for all who will come to know Him. This is good news indeed for the world. And so this sermon series is a reminder for us, even as we culminate these three years of one more in our spheres of influence, one more neighbour to love, one more nation to love, it's a reminder to us that we do have good news. And this good news is for us and for the world. And this good news will take us through uh, a number of sermons. But before that, let me just say that this number of sermons are taken mainly from the book that uh, the pastors and the pastoral team, as well as uh, our church leaders, read together last year. Uh, a, a few chapters that we read together is from the book, The Mission of God's People. It's written by Christopher Wright, a missiologist, a theologian. And in chapter 11, he reminds us that we do have good news as a people of God for ourselves and for us to bring into the world. And so this series of sermons is based on that one chapter that Christopher Wright wrote about how we can bring good news to the world. And this will carry us all the way through to the end of November. But today, we are talking about 
good news for the dejected. Good news for the dejected. And in our lives, there are times where we feel dejection in our lives, isn't it? Times in our lives where we don't see that all is good and well. Times in our lives where we feel low, where we feel despondent, where we feel as if we, have, we are so dejected that there's no hope in life. This may be times when relationships are estranged. Boyfriend, girlfriend's relationships. Husband and wife's relationships. Parents and children relationships. When these relationships are estranged, sometimes we feel dejected. Sometimes when careers are at stake, we feel dejection. We do not know where we are going, what our next step will be. And we feel despondent, we feel dejected. Sometimes when our health is waning and we don't seem as if we have the same vitality as before, we can feel dejection in our lives as well. And so dejection is part and parcel of our human experience that we do experience dejection, we do experience sadness, we do experience despondence. And there was a time in the life of the people of God, in the life of the Jews, where they felt dejected as well. There was a time that they found themselves in exile because they have rebelled against God and God had sent the Babylonians to capture over uh, their nation and many of them, many of them were deported into Babylon. And there in Babylon, there in exile, there pining for God's deliverance for their lives, living under the rule of an enemy, they were dejected. Some had hoped that they would be able to return to, the, to their own land in a short time, but the years came and the years went. By and by, they were still living by the rivers of Babylon not being able to return their home, to their homeland, pining for the return to their families in their homeland. And yet they find themselves there, still in Babylon, dejected, despondent. And many of them even felt they were rejected by God because they had rebelled against God as a nation. God had deported them, allowed the Babylonians to deport them to Babylon, and then they find themselves there under the oppressive rule of their enemy. And in a very poignant vision that Ezekiel made known to the Israelites, Ezekiel said that God in his vision was leaving even Jerusalem, that God's glory had left the temple. And in that moment, as Ezekiel mentioned that vision, the Israelites must have felt that God had even departed from their lives, from their nation, that they have now been rejected as a people of God and they're no longer a people of God. Now they're feeling dejected, but they're also feeling rejected. It's almost as if God had left them. And sometimes in our own situation, when our circumstances are prolonged, we find ourselves in such a situation too. We think to ourselves, God, I've been calling out to you, I've been crying out to you in my situation, I've been asking you to come and intervene, to come and deliver, and yet I find myself still here in my situation. Lord, where are you, Lord? Have I been rejected by you? Where are you, Lord? And I mentioned before that there was a time in the army when, when I was in the army, when I was in national service, when I felt the same way. And I had been uh, uh, abusing my power, right? Using vulgarities, scolding uh, the cadets and all. And one night I felt as if I had gone away from the Lord so much that I feel like I've been rejected by God. And I was fearful for my life. And I was asking God, God, am I lost to you forever? I can't feel you. But yet, the Lord brought me back to him in that moment. And there are times like this where we cry out to God, God, I'm feeling so dejected. Am I also rejected? In that moment of the Israelites' life there in Babylon, away from their homeland, feeling dejected and rejected, God sends 
his prophet. God sends his prophet Isaiah to these people and Isaiah proclaims to them these words they will read today in our scripture reading from Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10. And Isaiah tells them these words, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. There is good news for you. Those of you who are in exile, those of you who are dejected, those of you who feel as if you are rejected, there is good news for you. And this good news comes with peace, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return, the return of the Lord to Zion. This is the other word for Jerusalem. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted His people. He has redeemed. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared His holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. Come, let us pray together. Father, you have a word for those of us who are gathered here today who are feeling dejected in our situations. Lord, speak your word so that, Lord, we may hear it and rejoice in your word today. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. To these people who feel as if they are dejected, who feel like they are dejected and feel as if they have been rejected by God, even before these words from verses 7 to 10, our scripture reading for today, God speaks His love. God speaks of His grace. God speaks of them being still His people. Just three verses before. Because in verses 4 to 6, He tells them three times, three times that you are my people. You may be feeling dejected. You may be feeling as if you are rejected. But I'm telling you now, you are my people. God says to them, my people went down first into Egypt to sojourn there and the, Easier, and the Assyrians oppressed them for nothing. Now therefore, what have I here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people, God sees them, my people are taken away for nothing. Their rulers will, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore, my people, he tells them, my people shall know my name. And therefore, in that day, they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. For people who thought that God had left them, God tells them that you are my people, and here I am. Here I am with you. And there are times like this in our own lives, isn't it? We feel as if God's presence is no longer with us. We feel as if God had left us. But God tells us, here I am with you. You are my people. And then Isaiah goes on to tell them three reasons why. Why you should not feel dejected and rejected. He gives them these reasons. These reasons. He tells them that you may be dejected in your, in your circumstances. You may be feeling sad. You may be feeling despondent. You may be feeling dejected, but you are not rejected. And he tells them two reasons why. And the first reason is this. He tells them, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace. There is peace that God is trying to bring to us, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And Isaiah reminds them, therefore, that you may think that God had rejected you. You are dejected but no, you are not rejected because God is still reigning in your midst. God reigns. And if God is reigning, you can be at peace. And those who hear this prophecy in uh, Isaiah 52 would remember that earlier on, Isaiah had said in chapter 32, these words. Isaiah 32 says, Behold a king, right at the first Right at the start of the chapter, behold, a king will reign in righteousness. And when the king reigns, 
What happens? In verse 18, Isaiah goes on to say, My people, when the king reigns in righteousness, my people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. This is to a people where there were wars happening in their borders. This was to a people where the Canaanite armies were trying to encroach upon the land of Israel. And yet Isaiah tells them, when a king reigns in righteousness, you will dwell in peace. You will be in secure dwellings. You will be in quiet resting places. You do not have to worry. You can be at peace because a king reigns. And when the king reigns, the king protects. When the king reigns, the king will overcome the enemy. When the king reigns, you can be at peace. And when God reigns, this is an earthly king in chapter 32, when God reigns, surely we can be at peace. It's like how in the New Testament, there was a time, right, when the disciples found themselves in a storm, right? And Jesus was there in the ship in the boat, and Jesus was sleeping. He was sleeping and he was resting, even while there was a storm happening all around them. And the disciples woke him up, and then Jesus calmed the storm, and Jesus asked them, Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Because Jesus is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and the seas. He's in control of all things. He is reigning. And so he asked the disciples, why are you afraid? I reign even over the storm. And if I reign over the storm, trust in me. For I am here with you. And nothing will happen to you. Why are you afraid? When we realize that God is with us and He is reigning, there can be peace in our lives. Because what is the worst that can happen? Even if death comes, as we'll see later, God still reigns. And so, God reigns. We may be feeling dejected, but we are not rejected. For God reigns in the lives of the Israel, lights, and God reigns in our lives. And so, we can be at peace. But then, Isaiah goes on to give them a second reason why, even if they're feeling dejected, Isaiah tells them, you're not rejected because the Lord will return. The voice of the watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. It's a picture of how the watchmen who are waiting at Jerusalem where the walls are looking out eagerly and in anticipation to the return of the Lord. And when they see the Lord returning, they sing for joy and they announce that God is returning. And from year to year, they hear that God is returning. They look out, they see from eye to eye, they see the Lord's returning and they proclaim with singing. And so, because God returns, they have hope. They have hope that God will return to them one day. And so they can persevere on even in their desolation right now because they know that God will come back and God will come back and will deliver them. And because God will come back, God returns, they have hope. Many years ago when uh, uh, my son uh, was about one and a half years old, two years old, uh, my wife had uh, stopped working then, so she was a homemaker. She had been a homemaker since then. And uh, I would be going out to work, right? Um, I was still working for uh, Hewlett-Packard at that point in time. And uh, so my wife would take care of the boy uh, at home. And uh, almost every day at 4 p.m., she would call me. And then because my son is so active, running around the house all the time, and she has to look after him, and she has to cook, and she has to do all that, right? And so at 4 p.m., she would call me and she would ask me, Are you coming home? At 4 p.m., I'm like, yes, I'm coming home soon, very soon. And then she will say, please come home quickly. And then as I leave my work at 5.30 and I go home, I will see my wife carrying my son or in a, or in a stroller at the void deck at 5.45, 6 o'clock. 
and then she will be eagerly anticipating my return. And because she knows that I'll be returning, that time between 4 p.m. and 5.45, 6 p.m., she knows that she can persevere on. <laughs> Even with my son running after him and, you know, doing things with him. Because I will be returning. I'll be coming home. And because I'm coming home, she has hope and she can persevere on. And that likewise is for us. In our circumstances, when we feel as if we are dejected, if we know that God will come, if we know that God will return, we can persevere on. Because this will not last forever. God will come. God will return. And that's the second reason that Isaiah gave to the people of Israel. That you may be feeling dejected, but you're not rejected because God reigns and God will return. But not only that, God will redeem as well. And we read that in Isaiah 52 verse 9. Break forth together into singing. You waste places of Jerusalem. Notice this. Isaiah is saying to them that this is the waste places of Jerusalem, a place where there should be despondency, where there should be sadness because it's the waste places. And yet, Isaiah tells them, break forth together into singing. Why? For the Lord has comforted His people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Isaiah is telling them, can you see even while your earthly eyes see these waste places of Jerusalem, can you see that God redeems? God redeems. And when God redeems, you will be saved. When God redeems, He will be saved. And that happened a number of years later when the Persian Empire overcame the Babylonians and the king, Cyrus, allowed the Jews to return to their homeland under uh, the leadership of Ezra. And we read that in the book of Ezra, that the people went back to Jerusalem. God redeems them. God delivers them. They are saved because God redeems. And this redemption of God is made so clear and so powerfully in the image by Isaiah in the next verse. In the next verse, Isaiah says in verse 10 that the Lord has bared His holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. Bearing His holy arm is like this, you know. It's like getting into a fight, right? And then what do we do when we get into a fight? You bear your arm, you know. One thing to get into a fight, right? And this is how God comes to deliver His people. God will fight for His people. God will come bearing His arms to deliver them, to save them. And that's the image that Isaiah portrays in verse 10, that God comes and God will save. By His own bad holy arm, God will do so. And when He comes, there will be salvation. When He comes, the people will be saved. And so He tells the people, you may be feeling dejected, but you're not rejected because God will redeem you and you will be saved. You will be saved. So friends, there is good news. There is good news for the dejected. We may be feeling dejected, but can I tell you, you are not rejected. Because God reigns still in your life. And therefore, we can be at peace. Because God will return. And so we have hope. And we can persevere on. God will redeem. And we will be saved. Whatever that circumstances, whatever the situation might be, God reigns. God will return and God will redeem. But some of us, some of us have been finding ourselves in a situation for a long, long time, isn't it? What if, what if this situation in our lives, what if our relationships continue to be estranged? What if our careers never take off? What if our health continues to wane? until death comes. Even then, even then, we are reminded through Holy Communion, these words that we always proclaim, 
that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. God reigns even over death, for He is risen. And Christ will return. And when He returns, He will redeem His people. God delivers us in our earthly circumstances. But more importantly, God will deliver us unto life, life eternal. And that is why we can persevere on with hope because we know that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. There is good news indeed for the de- dejected because we, are, we may be dejected, but we are not rejected. God reigns so we can be at peace. God will return so we have hope. God will redeem and so we will be saved. And this is the truth in closing. This is the truth that an uncle who was aged 98 when I visited him in a nursing home knows. This uncle, nearing the end of his life, his body was failing, his health was failing. But there in a nursing home, when I visit him, he'll still be filled with joy. And when I visit him early in the morning, he likes to be visited early in the morning, when I visit him early in the morning, he'll be, stand, he'll be sitting by his bed, looking out the window, and he'll be looking at the sunrise. And then when I arrive, he'll say, Pastor Ben, today I'm reminded once again that the sun has risen. And when the sun rises, it reminds me that our Lord Jesus Christ, the sun, he is risen. It reminds me that he will come again. And then with eyes of peace, even while his body was failing, with eyes filled with hope, with eyes who knows, that knows that he has been saved, he twinkles in his eyes and he says to me, shall we sing together? Shall we sing to God be the glory? And in his low, bassy voice, he will sing with me, To God be the glory, great things He has done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Because He knows, this uncle knows that God still reigns, that God will return for him. And God will redeem him. That is why, even in his dejection, he knows he's not rejected because he is loved. He is loved by God through Christ. Let us pray together. Church, there are some of us who are feeling dejected today in our lives. As I was praying for this sermon, I see a number of circumstances. As I said earlier, some of us today may have relationships that have been estranged and you're feeling dejected. For some of us, it's as if our careers are going nowhere. We are fearful that may not even be able to provide for our family and we are feeling dejected. For others of us, we feel as if our health is continually waning. It seems as if it's impossible now to regain our past vitality and we are feeling dejected. For some of us in those situations, this has gone on for so long we feel as if 
God has rejected us. Where are you, O Lord? Are you even here? Church, into these circumstances, into your lives, God says to you, here I am. Would you trust in me that I'm still reigning in your life? So be at peace, for I'm watching over you. I'm still reigning. In the storms of your life, here I am with you. And God says to you that He has not forgotten you. He, has, he will return for you. And you may see His returning, perhaps, in the turning around of your situation in this life. But ultimately, ultimately, even if death comes, Christ returns for us. And that is why we can have hope. We can persevere on. For ultimately, God will redeem us, all of us. One day, when God returns and He redeems, all tears will be gone, all suffering will be at end. And we will have eternal redemption in Him. So let's press on. And know that even if we feel dejected, we are not rejected. We thank you, Lord, for you reign, for you will return, and you will redeem indeed. And as grateful and thankful people, we come to you, trusting in you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. In response, let us all stand and sing Salvation belongs to God, to our God.
Amen. Please be seated. In this world, rejection comes when we, sometimes due to our own sin, sometimes because of the sin of others, even when we have not sinned. But here at the Lord's table today, we all come with hope. We all come with hope that because we have come seeking the Lord, we can be confident that the Lord does not reject us, but the Lord still invites us to come into communion with Him. And so hear these words of invitation. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbours. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take a moment of silence now and allow the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, to purify it. Let us believe that as we confess to the Lord our sins, He will forgive us. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. And friends, as a people forgiven and loved by God, let us pray with hope and faith for the world, the church, and those in need. Saying, uh, saying these words, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, come and judge between the nations and settle disputes for many peoples. We pray for the day when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, and nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Put an end to war in Ukraine, and work justice and peace for all who are oppressed and fighting against their will. Hear the cries of people like the Armenians, Rohingya, Moroccans, Libyans and others who have been exiled or displaced from their homes by human violence or natural disasters. Shine your light in the darkness and strengthen them with the hope that you are indeed making all things new. Let your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. God, our Saviour, deliver your church from evil. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering violent persecution in places like Nigeria, Pakistan and others. Save them from those who treat them as enemies. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and assure them of your presence and help. Give them grace and power to stand firm in their faith and to overcome evil with good. Strengthen the hands and means of your people who are working to support these people in their time of need and those who are rebuilding their lives after having their homes and church buildings destroyed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, Hear the cries of those who are sick, troubled, or in need, all whom you know, and these whom we name before you now. Give them the daily bread, 
and supply what they need for life. Heal those who are sick. Strengthen the weak. Comfort the troubled. Give hope to the hopeless. And in all things, help them to find peace in the knowledge of your love for them that saw you give even your son Jesus for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name in this family of yours in TPMC. Fill your children here with your Holy Spirit that we be strengthened to walk and grow as your true children in the likeness of Christ and have power to be witnesses of your kingdom and of Christ to the Topayo town in Singapore and the nations which you have sent us to. Stir us to always be attentive and responsive to your call upon our lives that we may not be found wanting on the day of Christ. Give us grace that we may encounter you and know you more and so grow to be a community that manifests your love and kindness to all whom you send to us or bring among us. And we pray with our Lord Jesus Christ that you will make us one, that we may be proof of the power of your gospel that works reconciliation and makes peace among all through Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the confidence that the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 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 Dear friends, we have prayed and we have the confidence that God is the one who reigns. He has the power to save and so let us trust Him in all things. We also come in peace and today in our time of exchanging of peace, we will be using a Cambodian language, Khmer, the national language of Cambodia. And uh, we used this earlier in this year, so I'm going to ask, does anyone remember uh, what, what's the phrase for God bless you and Khmer language? It's okay. We will revise together, okay? And uh, as I was being taught this phrase again, uh, I heard, uh, I was like thinking, eh, that sounds like bread on potato. So if, if you can remember bread on potato, that you're quite close to that. Okay, so the greeting is, Priya Ong Pratien Po. Priya Ong Pratien Po. I don't know why I heard it as bread on potato, but Priya Ong Pratien Po. It means God bless you. So let's all try this together. Ready? One, two, go. Priya Ong Pratien Po. All right? So later, when we exchange uh, signs of peace, let's say this to one another. Uh, And today, in the courtyard, we will also be serving some Cambodian banana chips. Uh, So do head down and uh, grab a serving and enjoy it, All right. And this reminds us that we are in the gospel. um, God loves all nations and He does send us out to the nations as well. And Cambodia is one of the nations that we have missionaries in and we continue to send uh, mission teams uh, trips too as well. So let's continue to pray for the world. So now can we can I invite us to stand and let us bless one another with these words Priya Ong Pratien Po. Alright, as we take our seats, Loti Tam Kantang. May I greet you all, Priya Ong Pratien Po. Thank you very much. Alright, we are so glad that we are all able to gather this morning for worship. And today we do have a connect group. You might have seen them and you are welcomed by them on your way in. Victory and Family Connect Groups uh, who have come to uh, help welcome us and to welcome those who are new among us as well, all right? And you know, connect groups are such a precious element uh, in the life of our church here. Uh, it is in these groups that we can connect with one another. Sometimes in a, in a large group like that, uh, it is hard to know everyone and sometimes we get lost in the crowds. We do not know if the church actually cares. Uh, in our church, we, we want to try to address that by 
getting us into smaller groups so that in these smaller groups, we know that the church cares. All right? And so, uh, if you're not in a connect group yet, we just want to uh, encourage you to join one. And if you need help joining one, do come to any of our pastoral staff members. We are in uh, jackets and we will be most happy to uh, help you find a connect group. All right? Uh, but today we want to welcome, uh, at this point of time, we want to welcome those who are new among us and Victory and Family Connect Group members will be here to uh, help us to extend a special welcome gift to you. So if this is the first time you're joining us, I'm going to invite you to uh, raise your hands, but I'm going to start with these two sections first, all right? So these two sections, if you're here for the first time, joining us for the first time, can I invite you to raise your hands? We have one uh, brother right, right behind. Thank you. Oh, we have one sister there also, seated around the same area. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Anyone else uh, on the floor who, are, who is joining us for the first time? If not, I'm going to go to the gallery. Anyone else in the gallery in this section joining us for the first time? Right. If not, I'm going to move to this section. Uh, these two sections on the floor, is there anyone else, anyone who is joining us for the first time? I invite you to raise your hand so we can welcome you. Right. If not, quickly going back to the gallery. Anyone joining us for the first time? No? Alright, well, we welcome all those who are joining us for the first time. We hope you have had a, a meaningful time with us so far and uh, going ahead as well. Alright? Uh, for those of us who have not uh, who are, may be new and you have not raised your hands for any reason at all, we still do wish to extend this gift to you. And if you would like to receive one, please just approach any of our, our, our ushers at the end of the service. Uh, they are in bright yellow jackets uh, and we'll be most happy to uh, pass you a welcome pact as well. Alright, so welcome once again. Uh, for those who have received the pack, there is a visitor's card inside. We will appreciate it very much if you could fill that in for us and pass it to any of our ushers or drop it into the offspring bag uh, so that it will help us to know how we can best uh, serve you and help you uh, along as you join us in this community. All right? We now continue in our time of worship in the giving of the Lord's tithe and our offering. Uh, and in this act of worship, we express our trust and our love towards God and we share in His concern for the world. Uh, so let us give according to how God has enabled us to. Uh, there are the e-giving means are on the screen, or for those in the gallery, they, uh, you can find the QR code uh, on the armrest as well. All right? And if you are giving your pledges, please do remember to indicate in the reference section, uh, P followed by your name under reference. Um, yep. For those who are visiting, uh, please do not feel obligated to give. Uh, but if you wish to give, there is no amount that is too small. Today, we will also be taking a second offering. Uh, and the second offering collected today will be taken for the Trek Disaster Relief Fund. This fund is administered, administered by the Trinity Annual Conference. Uh, and this fund will be made available at short notice when disasters arise so that um, as a larger church, we can send resources and personnel uh, there where appropriate. And this allows the Methodist Church to bear witness for Christ uh, and serve humanity in times of crisis. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward now. and Let us pray as we prepare to give to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, thank you that you are the God who is making all things new. You are coming again. Christ is coming again. And because of that, we have hope that, Lord, the good that we do in this world will have meaning. And so, Lord, as we give, we pray that you will take these gifts, receive it, and use it, O oh God, for the transformation of the world, for the extension of your kingdom, and to give hope to all, especially those who are dejected. For we give in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as the offering is being collected, our choir and our joy voices will be presenting a choral anthem to the Lord. Let us praise the Lord with them.
Amen. Thank you for that wonderful reminder in song that God made all things bright and beautiful and He is making all things new in our world. Um, next, we have some family news items and concerns of our church to take note of. So let's watch them on this video. We kick off our family news with an announcement about our Encounter Journal. This Bible reading plan is designed to help us grow as disciples by keeping the habit of reading scriptures daily and spending quiet time with God. Reading the Bible is a basic must-do for any disciple of God because it is His Word telling us about His design, who He is and how we relate to Him. The Encounter Journal for the fourth quarter of 2023 is ready for download under the Media and Resources menu on our website. You can also pick up a hard copy from the information counter while stocks last. This Bible reading plan has shorter daily readings based on the Revised Common Lectionary and longer readings to read the Bible in one year. The Holy Spirit is at work among us, prompting us to faith in Christ and deepening our commitment to a life with Christ. Do you feel prompted to be baptised or become a member of our church? Then make a declaration of faith by signing up for our Step Up course. This six-week course is a prerequisite for baptism or membership in TPMC. For church membership application, you will first need to be an active member in a connect group or serving in a TPMC ministry before applying for this course. Parents who want their children to be baptised will need to attend a parent briefing. The next baptism and membership reception service will be held on 10th of December at the 10.30am service. You can get hard copies of the various application forms from the information counter or download them from the events and causes section on our website. Please complete all application forms and submit it to the church office before 15th of October. The Seniors Ministry is having its Thanksgiving lunch on 23rd of November. As in previous years, there will be plenty of food, fellowship and fun during the event. So, if you are a senior, go to the courtyard after this service and sign up for this lunch. It costs $44 per person and registrations close next Sunday. For me, it's to return to the Word of God and rediscover God's faithfulness and promises to you. Serving the audience of one. Choosing to follow the way He does things, even though I may not always understand why at the time. It's choosing Jesus, who is my only hope anyway, again and again, through the good times and the bad. Going forth boldly, so that I might witness for the glory of Christ. And, and I'm the camp chair of this year's highlight of the highlight event, which is Youth Camp. So, this year's camp will be held from 26 to 29 December, and it will be a four day, four night camp, and it will cost $70. So, the theme for this year's camp is discipleship, and us as a camp committee, we decided to focus on the heart of discipleship, which is laying down our rights and to put Christ first in our lives. So, what is this year's camp name? It is Anchor! So, why Anchor? This is because we wanted to focus on the importance that as a disciple, we need to be anchored in Christ. And we also need to have Him ground us as we go through whatever life throws at us. In order to do that, we need to fully surrender ourselves and lay down our lives completely and follow Him, trusting that He will anchor us as we go through the different storms of our lives. And also because it's disciple shit and anchor so get it? <laughs> this camp will be looking into six critical aspects of discipleship in a youth's life. And these are a disciple's heart, a disciple's relationship, a disciple's witness, a disciple's denial, a disciple's song, and lastly, a disciple's service. These are some of the topics that many youths like us may wonder as we navigate through different stages of our lives. Trying to be a faithful Christian as a youth is not easy. We are faced with so many different influences, from the people around us, to social media, to the internet. Even then, so many of these different influences do not show or teach us how to live as disciples of Christ, which is much more than just coming to church on Sundays. Our camp Corp is working extremely hard to plan a camp that is both fun and meaningful for all youths. Our activities and speaker sessions are meant to provide a faith foundation 
and help us build the relationships that will support and sustain us during our lifelong discipleship journey. Sign ups open this month. So if you are primary six or a youth, do sign up and join us for Anchor 2023. And if you are a parent, don't forget to sign your child up. We don't want any of you to miss out on this extremely meaningful opportunity. See you there! So yes, this year's Youth Camp in December will be named Anchored and we are starting to cruise towards it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was given that script. So there will be a slew of exciting speakers, so campers will be gaining a flotilla of insights to deepen themselves in discipleship, you get it? Which is the theme of this year's camp. So sign up quick on Church Centre app and don't let this ship sail you by. And you know what, looking at the video, I think we can be all very proud of our youth, our leaders who have risen up, who have stepped up to organise this camp and who have been working very hard, not just in this period but throughout the year as well, uh, working hard at wanting to work out their salvation and to follow Christ and helping their younger youths do the same as well. And so we, we really want to thank God uh, for their hard work and, their, and for them as well. Okay, so it was targeted at parents. Parents, sign your kids up. Grandparents, make sure your kids sign their kids up. All right? The rest, of the, the rest of the items in the bulletin are for your prayer and participation. Uh, well, coming to the end of this announcement, this time of announcements, friends, if you do have a need today and you would like someone to pray with you or for you, uh, please do come forward to the front of the sanctuary after the service and we will have prayer ministers here to pray for you. Uh, and if today you would like to know more about Christ or how to begin to uh, trust Him and have this hope, uh, that we have been talking about. Uh, please also come to the front after the service and we will be so happy to guide you along. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward now. And church, will you let us stand and let's praise God with the doxology. stewards to please come forward now. Brothers and sisters, at this table, we have hope because the Lord is with us. So bearing that in mind, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, 
gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on his gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So church, now with the confidence of being the children of God, shall we stand together and sing the Lord's Prayer. Please be seated. The table of the Lord is now open for all who love Him, earnestly repent of our sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. So church, as the as the stewards come to wait upon you, uh, receive the elements, hold it in your hands, and you can begin to peel out the wrappings, but let's not eat it first uh, and partake of it first. We'll wait until the whole family has received before we partake of it together. And then you can pass it on to the next person and say, the body and blood of Christ given for you. And that's how we serve one another as priesthood of all believers. So let's come before the Lord and receive of His love, His blessings for all of us.
This time, can you just check that everyone has uh, received an element? If not, can you just kindly raise your hand so that we can serve you? Right, all of us have it. Let's all stand. So dear friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen. Please hold on to the wrappings for a while longer. After the service, you may deposit them on your way out in the receptacles. Let's pray. Finally, we are grateful and thankful for our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, He came. He died for us. But He rose again, proving that He reigns even over death. And we know, Lord, that He will return, return for all of us one day. And in His return, all of us will be redeemed unto life, life eternal. And that's the grace You pour out upon our lives, reminding us always that we are, even while sometimes feeling dejected, or we're never rejected by You. And so we are grateful and thankful for now, a reminder once again of how much You love us through Christ Jesus. We give praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing even as we sing our closing hymn. Yeah. 
So, people of God, go forth carrying this good news in your heart. That you may be dejected, but you're not rejected. For God reigns, and so you can be at peace. For God returns, and so you can have hope. For God redeems, and so you will be saved. Go forth with this good news in your heart and proclaim it so that others may have God reigning in their lives. So that others may know that God will return for them and so that others may be redeemed and be saved. And as you do so, may the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with all of you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated till after the call response.